Hi, I'm Angela Nicholson, and in this tutorial, I'm going to take a look at how you can use masks to create composite images like this one with a better sky from this one with a very dull sky, and also how you can apply adjustment layers selectively. So let's make a start. Now I've got this image here with a dull sky and I've got this image here with a dull foreground but a much more interesting sky. So what I'm going to do is click on the background layer of the interesting sky image in the layers panel and drag it across to my other image. I just drag it so it's aligned. Now I can close the um, sky image because I don't need that anymore and just move this across. Now, because I've just positioned one image on top of the other, I can see the uppermost layer, which is the sky image. Now what I want to do is to create a mask which hides part of this upper layer to reveal the layer beneath, because I want to be able to see the foreground. So I just click on the layer and then select the mask option at the bottom of the box here. And now you can see a white rectangle has appeared in the layers panel, indicating the mask. Now all I need to do is paint in the mask. So if I just select a black brush, so I'm toggling with the foreground and background colour, I want to have a black brush, select that, and now I can just paint in where I want the mask to appear, and that will reveal the layer beneath. Now as you can see, the mask is appearing at the moment the opacity is only 85%, let's put it up to 100%. There we go, paint it in. And you can see the black areas in this little thumbnail here are showing where the mask has appeared. And if I want, I can just switch the brushes around and select a white brush and I can paint over, over the mask to reveal the top image again. There we go. And you'll see that the mask has gone over here has gone completely white, indicating that I've got the original image, the original top image. I've removed the mask because it's actually the bottom image, the background that I want to work on. I want to see it with a better sky, and it's rather uh, counterintuitive to be painting in the foreground for my original image. So what I'm going to do is click on the mask layer and then just hit Control I and that inverts the mask. And now I can see the image that I actually want to work on and I can use the, the uh, mask tools to paint in the new sky. Now this area here, this rectangle, is black indicating that the whole of this layer is masked off. And if I use a white brush, which is selected here, I can just paint in where I want this top layer to appear. So I've selected the brush, I can just paint it in. Now if I want, I could leave the opacity at 100% or I can reduce the opacity to paint it in more subtly. Alternatively, I can use um, a graduation tool and just click and drag. And you see that's applied a graduation. Let's take it a bit lower, there we go. And now if I want, if I click on the thumbnail and the move tool, I can move the image up. Just moving the image of the sky upwards. There we go. Now if I click back on the mask, I can just apply that graduation a bit lower down. There we go. So when I've finished, I can just flatten the image and then save it. Now let's take a look at how you can use a mask to apply an adjustment layer selectively. Again, this image needs a little work to the sky and I'm going to do that with an adjustment layer. So a layer, new adjustment layer, and I'm going to use a uh, curve. And I'm just going to darken the sky. I'm not too concerned about what it does to the foreground. Just darken it, that's looking a bit better. Okay, right, so I'm reasonably happy with what that's done to the sky, but as you can see, it's made the foreground very dull. Uh, automatically, 
Photoshop has created um, a layer mask here indicated by this uh, white thumbnail. Now if I paint with a black brush I can paint over the foreground to mask off where the adjustment layer is applied. But again I think that's a little bit counterintuitive. I'd rather paint in where I want the curve to have the effect. So what I'm going to do again is hit Control I and I've now masked the entire adjustment layer off so I can paint in where I want it to be applied. So just check that the brush is white, yes it is, and then go and select the brush that I want. I'm going to put the opacity right up to 100% so it has its full impact and then I can just paint in where I want the effect to be applied. I'll just go down. If I want, I could reduce the opacity, take it right down and paint it in more subtly around the sort of merging area. Or alternatively, I can use a graduated filter and just click and drag. Just drag that down a bit further. And if I decide that I um, don't like the effect or I need to edit it. It's just a question of selecting the brush again, turning it black and then either keeping the opacity as it is or pushing it right up to 100% and then painting the black back in. See that's lightening it up again. So you can just switch between the two brush colours and edit to get the result that you want. And if you want, you can revisit the curve and make it even more dramatic. That's going a bit too far. You just keep working at the image and applying the adjustment layer until you're happy. And of course, because it's an adjustment layer and a mask, you can revisit it at any time, provided that you save the image as a, a PSD file that preserves the layers. So there we go. Let's take a look at how you apply a mask when you've got trickier, more detailed edges like the hair on this woman's head. So what I want to do here is create a selective black and white image. So I'm going to go to a layer, new adjustment layer, black and white. And in this instance, I want the model to remain uh, color. So I'm going to paint in the mask and click that to make it black. And I'm going to make a very rough selection. A rough mask, just paint round over her face and some of the hair. Now I need to mask off some of these more detailed, difficult areas. If I just click on the mask and go down to the mask edge option, just select that. And these controls will help me refine the mask. There's a number of different uh, view modes up here. This one's working quite well. Sometimes uh, black and white can be quite useful. Sometimes marching ants, overlay. And it's worth just toggling through to see which one you find easiest to work with. I think on this occasion I'm going to use um, overlay. Now if I tick the smart radius box, Photoshop will attempt to work out what radius to paint with. Um, but generally when you're working, if you've got a very distinct sharp edge, you want to keep the radius very small, maybe one or two. But if it's a, a blurred edge where you've got lots of fine detail going across the uh, border, sorry, across the background, you need a slightly bigger radius. So let's just uh, start and see how Photoshop does. So just go around painting in, just doing it very roughly. 
because it can be helpful to zoom in if you hold control and then, then press plus you can just zoom in makes it much easier to see what you're doing just paint round covering those edges. If you find that um, it's not really selecting everything you want, it's worth just trying to adjust the radius yourself. You can see some areas turning pink indicating that they've been selected. So we just go around painting in those edge areas. Obviously this takes a while so you need to go around but it's not nearly so difficult or time consuming is to select every little hair yourself. You can use these uh, adjust edge options to smooth out any jaggy areas just to smooth the selection. Also you can feather it so there's a bit more of a soft gradation between the mask and the unmasked areas. And then the contrast control allows you to have a, a sharper edge. You can see it's giving me a sharper gradation, so I'm just going to pull that back. The shift edge is a bit like um, a contract or expand option. If I make it negative it makes the um, the mast area bigger and positive it's shrinking it. And then when you're finished, just hit OK. If you want to edit the mask at all, you just go back to the normal masking tools. Now I've finished editing the mask. If I want, I can go back and just edit the black and white options if I want. As you can see, I'm editing the background, but because the uh, model's masked out, the skin colour's not being affected. So that was a quick introduction to using masks to create composite images and to apply adjustments selectively.